The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Later in the program, we will bring you an important message from Mr. J. Edgar Hoover on our nation's internal security. From time to time in their 30s and early 40s, most men and women ask themselves, what will I be doing when I'm 65 years old? What are my chances of being 100% self-supporting when it's time to stop work? Well, that's largely up to you and the decision you make right now. One such opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence for you in your 60s. Do you like that idea? Then please listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, robbery. It's titled, Old Mother Larceny. What kind of homes do criminals come from? That's a question frequently asked of members of the FBI. The average person usually visualizes a dark, crowded tenement in the slum area of a large city as the typical breeding ground of delinquency. Actually, of course, in millions of such homes, conscientious parents who really put their heart into their job overcome the handicaps of poverty and bad environment. Their children grow up to be successful men and women and good citizens. The truth is that criminal homes are found in good neighborhoods as well as bad, in city and country and small towns. Almost always, the common denominator is a parent who, for one reason or another, cannot measure up to the responsibilities of parenthood. In tonight's case from the official files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, you will meet such a parent and two sons who are the inevitable products of the kind of upbringing they received. Tonight's FBI file opens on a river running past a large Midwestern city. It is late evening as a small boat drifts aimlessly toward a barge loaded with freight cars. In the rear of the small boat, a man lies motionless. In the prow stands a tall, heavy-set man. As he sees a figure move on the barge, he lifts his head and yells. You want good fresh fish? Well, go Maybe your friends buy some. Nobody up here but me. Then you buy. We got to get money for more wine. Buy one, mister. Ten cents. No. A nickel. No. Don't you like fish? I don't want any. I'll make you a present. You take a fish free for nothing. You be my friend. Will you get out of here if I do? Sure, sure. We get wine money someplace else. How about a fish like this? That's fine. Swell, mister. You take it. (laughs) Okay, Danny. Come on board. Let's get to work. Meanwhile, in the same city, in the basement of a large office building, an FBI agent is practicing at an indoor pistol range. He is firing his last rounds as Agent Jim Taylor approaches. Larry, can I see you a minute? Yeah, sure, Jim. I just got a call. They want us upstairs. Oh? They tell me you're handling Becker's cases while he's out. Yeah, that's right. Well, we might be getting a lead on those stolen watches. I haven't hit that file yet. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, thanks. Can you fill me in? Yeah. 
About six months ago, two men knocked out the watchman at the freight yard, broke the seal on a car from New York, and stole almost 300 wristwatches. Quite a haul. Yeah, about $6,000 worth. Oh, this is the only elevator running tonight. Yeah. The only description we got was that one of the men was tall and heavy set. It all happened at night, and the watchman never did get a good look at them. And you say we may be getting a lead? Yeah. We had the list of serial numbers inside the watch cases, and it just paid off. Oh, how? Well, a soldier in Korea returned one of the stolen watches to the factory to be repaired. Uh huh. The Army sent a cable for us and found out the watch was bought at a local store. Which one? A little place on Broadway, Calhoun's Jewelry Shop. Is he a fence? No, I went to see him. He's giving us full cooperation. Mm. Well, can he help? Yeah, he remembered buying the watches from an itinerant salesman. Gave him the name he used and a good description. I sent them both along to Washington. Go ahead, Inler. Yeah, thanks. Sixteen, please. Does Calhoun have any idea what the salesman's name was? No, but he promised to come by the office tonight, go through our file of pictures. That was this afternoon. Uh-huh. Well, then he called a couple of minutes ago to report the salesman came back to the store. Tonight? Yeah. Wanted to sell Calhoun binoculars this time. And instead of stalling, Calhoun accused him of selling stolen watches, said he was taking him to the police. Well, the mention of that, the salesman ran. To get away? Yeah. You say Calhoun's coming to the office? Yeah, he's on his way now, so let's lay out those pictures. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Bellion. Mr. Martin, come in, come in. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, where are the dead end kids? Not home yet. Come on out into the kitchen. I'm cooking something special for them. Mm. Al told me Danny and him were getting some binoculars tonight. How, how'd they make out? Oh, I don't know. They never bother me with business. Meatballs and fried onions. Ah, wonderful. Uh, how soon will they be back? Who knows about them? If you could tell where they'll be the next minute, would they be my babies? Babies? Uh, you couldn't hide them in Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you wait and eat with them? Uh, no, thanks, I can't. I, I got to meet my girl. Uh, you don't know when they'll be back, huh? Uh-uh, no. Well, I got to see him and get those binoculars the first thing in the morning. Well, why so fast? Last time, with the watchers, you said it was better to leave them for a little while. Well, I, uh, that was different. Mr. Martin, you're not in some trouble. Me? Say, you want to know how lucky I am? I win crooked raffles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like my boys. Always fun comes first. Say, you know what they did to me last night? No. <laughs> well, when I sleep, I sleep. The building could fall down. Yeah. So last night... <laughs> They come in my room and carry me on my mattress oh. out to the kitchen. <laughs> then they made me get up and cook them a whole meal oh. in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Berrien, I'd like to stick around and hear how you how you locked each other in the gas chamber, but but I can't see. So so tell Al to call me when he gets back. The jewelry store was here, Larry. Yeah, when? While you were in with the SAC, he went through our pictures. No luck. Anything else we can do tonight? <laughs> Nothing I can think. Oh, will you take that, Jim? Yeah. Taylor speaking. Yes, Captain. When? Mm. Any descriptions? Mm. What'd they get? Yeah, I see. Yes, right away. Thanks for calling. Larry, it was Captain Jones, 1st Precinct. Another interstate freight car was broken into tonight. Oh? This one was on a barge. Two men did the job, got three crates of binoculars. That's what the salesman offered Calhoun. Uh-huh. And the M.O. used tonight was the same as on the wristwatch theft. Uh, did they leave any evidence this time? Well, the railroad police are waiting for us to inspect. Larry, will you run up to Pier 11? I'll cover the hospital. Yeah. Hospital? Well, the watchman passed out after reporting the robbery. He's an emergency ward now. I'll wait to see him and try to get some dope on the two thieves. <laughs> We did it, 
good, Ma. Ah! Ah! Put me down! Put me down! Oh, I couldn't breathe. Uh, what do you have to breathe for? <laughs> Three cakes of binoculars. Pretty good, eh? Hey, what's that I smell, huh? Meatballs and fried onions. Well, come on, let's get at them. <laughs> oh! Timber! <laughs> you booby trapped me. <laughs> All right, now get up. We'll go eat. Come on, come on. Oh, brother, am I hungry. Well, sit down. It's ready. Oh, boy. Hey, it looks good, Ma. I tried to give some to your friend, Mr. Martin. Oh, is he here? Oh, didn't I tell you? Nah. I guess all the excitement had made me forget. He wants you to call him. Uh, first we'll eat. I don't understand, Mr. Martin. Last time he said you should hold the watches. Tonight he wanted the glasses right away. Well, to sell them? Yeah, he wants them tomorrow morning. Oh, that's funny. Why does she want them so quick? I don't know. Maybe we should find out. Yeah. Oh, Al, uh, you forgot. Huh? Mars present. Oh. What, you brought me something? Yeah, yeah, uh, go get it. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> what is it? Uh, we picked out the best pair of binoculars for you. What do I need with them? Well, you'll be able to see in the windows on the next block. Well, I don't know anybody there. Well, you didn't know the people across the street when you started looking in their place. But who can see to the next block? Well, with these glasses, it'll be like they're in the same room. Here, my here. Take a look, huh? All right. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> okay, Ma. Put them down. You'll wear them out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we put black polish inside the glass. <laughs> Did Washington send anything yet? Yeah, Larry, that ident just came through. Oh, who is it? Somebody named Eric Martin. His pictures are on the way. How come we didn't have one? No local arrest record. Oh. He's from back east originally. Been convicted four times on confidence charges, twice for handling stolen goods. Well, sounds like the right man. I've sent out a wanted on him. I wish we could get something on those other two. I got zero at the barge. Oh? Huh? Not a single print, inside or outside the freight car. Well, that about matches what the watchman contributed. Couldn't he give you any description? Well, nothing we don't know. The one who did the slugging was big and heavy set. Yeah. So all we got to work on is the ident on Eric Martin. Yeah, but that might be enough. If we can find him, Larry, we might come up with a whole trio. Respect for a king size hangover. <laughs> oh, here I am. Oh, those crates in the truck, is that the merchandise? Uh huh. Well, let's have the keys. Keys to what? The truck. I got to live with that stuff this morning. <laughs> Where's all the big jokes today? In those bottles I emptied last night. Now, let's have the keys and I'll get started. <laughs> Wait a minute. Al wants to talk to you. Al? Al? Yeah? Eric is here. Hello, Eric. <laughs> you don't feel so good today. Huh? What's the matter? Look, I came here to get some binoculars, not to have a physical exam. <laughs> he wants to take the truck and deliver the binocs to some guy. Uh, who's the guy? Did I ask you where you stole them? <laughs> come on, come on. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Before you go, we ought to have a drink. <laughs> well, that I can use. <laughs> All right, I'll go get the bottle. Did you get those lugs off? Oh, no, no. I'll get them. I uh, went by your hotel this morning to see you, Eric. Oh? They said you checked out. Where are you living? Well, no place. I uh, figured when I got my piece of this action, I'd uh, well, I'd move to a nicer joint. And I couldn't find you at the hotel. I went to see your girlfriend. <laughs> what a hangover she had. Yeah, well, I'll match mine with anybody's. <laughs> I took her out and bought her a drink. Hey, I had to open a new bottle. Huh? Uh, well, you drink first. You guys, that might be gasoline. <laughs> okay, okay, now, come on, come on. Let, let's have it. <laughs> hey, Eric, uh, your girl says you did a lot of talking last night. Did you ever see a silent drunk? Huh? 
Say, she even told her the cops were looking for you, but you didn't care. You said you were making a big score today, and you'd pick her up and take her away with you. I'll have to change brands. Those three crates would make a nice score, wouldn't they? Oh, no. Al, you don't think he was going to grab the stuff and run? Ask him. Now, listen, you ought to know that I wouldn't pull a thing like that. Well, after what she's told me, I'm not so sure. Oh, look, Al, we're pals. How do you explain what she told me? Well, uh, it's perfectly logical. I uh, figured all the money I'd be getting from you. What you'd the... get from me ain't big enough to blow town on. Now, look, if you don't want to believe me, we'll call the deal off. It ain't that easy. Now, look, don't, don't. I want to talk about it some more. Don't, Al. No, I... I don't feel good, honest. I... You mean you need some air? Yeah, 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 I, I need air. Well, we can take care of that. <laughs> we'll take you for a little ride in our boat. <laughs> We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. But now, listen. Mailman's here early today, Essie. Guess he's got our check from the Equitable Society. Every month, right on the dot, those Equitable checks come to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plan. They're checks that mean financial independence for life after you're 65 years old. And here's Mr. Robert Buckner who started one of those plans almost 30 years ago. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Buckner? Yep. 1950 was quitting time for me. I resigned from my job, and I'm here to say I've been having a mighty good time ever since. In other words, Mr. Buckner, you're now enjoying the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries. Financial independence. Nobody will ever have to help me to get along, Mr. Keating. My monthly equitable check takes care of that. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. I'm living in a little town down on the Gulf Coast. My wife and I have always dreamed of a spot like that. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. I like to fool around in my home workshop, turning out old rustic furniture, even pick up a little extra money selling it. You know, Mr. Keating, the best thing that ever happened to me was when my equitable society representative... Prove that you don't have to make a lot of money to afford an independent 60s plan. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your social security and the life insurance you already own. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. Buckner's experience? Phone your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, Old Mother Larceny. In tonight's FBI file, we have met a woman wholly unfit to bring up children. Naturally, her own moral irresponsibility and emotional immaturity were transferred to her sons. Small wonder they developed into criminals. That may seem unimportant to you since this type of parent is fortunately rare. However, parental selfishness and neglect are not rare. And it is probably true that a major part of all delinquency can be traced to either parental neglect or indifference. Awareness of this is largely responsible for the development of parent training courses, guidance clinics, and social service organizations which are available nowadays to almost everyone. Parents are urged to take advantage of them. Any parent who has any reason to feel that his children are getting out of hand should take prompt advantage of this expert assistance. Remember, in nine cases out of ten, it takes a delinquent or indifferent parent to rear a delinquent child. Tonight's FBI file continues later that day at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor has just entered. Larry, we just missed Eric Martin. Hmm? Where? At the Star Hotel. He checked out this morning. No forwarding address, naturally. No. And a man was there before me, questioned everybody, trying to find out where Martin went. Who was he? Well, I didn't get a name, but I got a description. He was about six feet three, very heavy set, dark hair, and a scar on his left cheek that looked like a knife wound. The man who slugged those watchmen? That's what I figure. 
Police are checking their files now. Well, I wish I could throw something into the pot. No, no word on the binoculars? The police questioned all suspected fences. There hasn't been a trace of them. Well, with Martin finding out he was wanted, maybe they decided to go under for a while, huh? Could be. Well, if they did, we ought to... Pardon me. Right? Yeah, sure. Taylor speaking. Yes, Captain. Oh, when? Hmm. Where was that? Yo. Yes. Yes, of course. Thanks for calling. Well, our suspect must have caught up with Eric Martin. His body was just fished out of the river. Huh? Come on, Larry. Let's get over to the morgue. Sell those things? Nah, we were busy saying goodbye to a friend. Oh, I'm sure glad you have so many friends. Yeah, we got one less now. Who? Eric. He was gonna cheat us. Oh, Mr. Martin? Mm hmm. Me and Zanny went for a boat ride with him. He fell overboard. Oh, that's too bad. I was fixing lunch for him, too. Well, he wasn't very happy anyway. Nah. It's a shame he had to have his accident before he did that business for you. That way, at least, he'd have died rich. <laughs> well, he told me the name of the man who wanted to buy the Vinox. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, after we eat, I'll get somebody else to go see him. We can go ourselves. Keep the money in the family. But, Ma... Son, the way prices are today, a person's got to try to keep every dollar he steals. You the men to see the Martin body? Yes, that's right. Over here. Thanks. That's him. Yeah, it's Martin, all right. Mm -hmm. That's a bad head one. Uh huh. His marks on his face, Larry. Looks like he was beaten. Yeah. Is the medical report in yet? Just came down. Oh, thanks very much. Cause of death. Skull fracture. Dead when he hit the water. Uh, how about Martin's belongings? Over on the table. Thanks very much. In there. Well, he didn't have very much. No. Auto keys. Any numbers on the other side? Uh, no. Well, it'd be tough to trace. Well, this key's got a number on it. That's all. Hey, let me take a look at that. I got the same kind of key last month when I rented a locker at the airport, and one company owns all those lockers. Let's call them, Larry, and see where this key belongs. There's another bank of lockers, Larry. Eight, three, seven... There it is. Yeah. Got it? There's a bag, Jim. Open it, will you? Right. One change and a bottle opener. This porter's tag on the handle has number 17 on it. Let's try and find him. Larry, I located number 17. You remember Martin? Yeah, he was here this morning. With anyone? No, alone. Come on. Wh where are we going? Porter saw Martin going out that door. If he took a cab, the starter might know where he went. Larry, we're closing in. What did you find? The starter remembers Martin taking a cab. Where to? He doesn't know, but this morning's drivers have cashed in, so let's hit the cab garage and start checking trip records. Can you leave the truck here? After five o'clock, you can park any place. You go ahead, Ma. We'll wait here. All right. Eric said the man's name was Wilson. Mr. Wilson, I remember... Good luck, Ma. Can I help you? You are Mr. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. I have uh, binoculars here in this box. How much will you give me? Well, I'll have to see them first. Go ahead, open it. Hmm. 
These are quite good. How much? Twenty dollars. Oh, Mr. Wilson, they're worth more. Not to me. Well, all right. You want more? How many more? Nine dozen. I couldn't buy that many without knowing where you got them. Well, my husband, he has a trucking business. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's mm -hmm. bad. Right now it's bad. One of his customers, he can't pay the bill. He told my husband to keep the goods. And these binoculars are the goods? Yeah. Where are the others? In the truck outside. Come on, I'll oh, show you. I can't leave the store right now, but perhaps you wouldn't mind showing them to these gentlemen. Oh, you want to see the glasses? Yes, ma'am. Are you the owners? No, Mrs. Berrien. Well, who told you my name? We're special agents of the FBI. F we just arrested your sons outside. Arrested? Come on, we can all ride down to headquarters together. Mrs. Berrien and her two sons, Albert and Daniel, were turned over to local authorities. They were tried and convicted in a state court on a charge of murder. In checking the cab records, Special Agents Taylor and Dodge found that one trip made at the time Eric Martin left the railroad station had been from the terminal to Wilson's Pawn Shop. Since that was a likely place to dispose of binoculars, they waited in the hope someone would appear and try to consummate the sale. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Here is a vital message on our nation's internal security from J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Hoover's message is, and I quote, The term subversive activities applies to activities on the part of any individual or organization which is intended to forcibly overthrow the American government or to give aid to its enemies. Your FBI has been entrusted with the duty of coordinating the investigation of subversive activity on a national basis. All law enforcement agencies, patriotic organizations, and loyal citizens are requested to report information relating to subversive activities to the FBI immediately. This is an important contribution that the private citizen can make to the nation's security program. Now, two final questions on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Mr. Keating, I'm 33 years old. How long before I should start one of these plans? Start right now. The sooner you begin, the lower your yearly cost will be. Is there any fixed amount of money I have to pay? No, the amount of your Independent 60s plan is strictly up to you. Your Equitable Society man takes into account your present salary, your future income under Social Security, and the life insurance you now own. A comparatively small amount of additional life insurance may be all that's required. Get the exact figure from your Equitable Society representative or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Homicide. Its title, The Night Rider. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Tony Barrett, Ted DeCorsia, Charles Maxwell, John Mitchum, Jeanette Nolan, Victor Rodman, and John Sheehan. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Night Rider on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. <laughs>